Do you like wielding weapons to cause mayhem to zombies and enemies? <laughs> Using style to make yourself look cool? Do you like looting like a goblin? Yoink! My loot now! Of course you do, it's like a drug for your brain. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is a VR zombie horror game. I know, very original. Created by Skydance Interactive that focuses on crafting, exploration, freedom of choice, and visceral combat design for an immersive VR experience. It is downright one of my favorite VR games I have ever played. The setting takes place in New Orleans. <sighs> My voice cracked. I am a 21 year old grown man and my voice doesn't crack, okay? The setting takes place in New Orleans with different factions taking control of certain territories. You play as a tourist and your goal is to figure out the mysteries of the city. We have seen previous companies take on the Walking Dead franchises with a first person perspective, such as Overkill's The Walking Dead and Survival Instinct, both receiving negative reviews because how awful the games were. Boring storyline, repetitive dreadful gameplay, guns were not satisfying to use, handful of bugs, overall just resident sleeper. It felt like a cash grab and left a bad taste for many people. Zombie games nowadays are overlooked because the idea has been done so many times over the past few years. While I was watching the gameplay trailer for The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, it looked promising and gave it the benefit of the doubt. The combat reminded me similarly to other games such as Boneworks and Blade and Sorcery, which is very difficult to accomplish. Before we dive ourselves into this review, first I want to thank you gamers for clicking on this video. Second, big shout out to Skydance Interactive, the developers of this game, for sponsoring this video. At the beginning of the game, you are introduced to your safe zone where you have access to three different types of upgradable crafting stations. More details about the upgrade mechanic later. First bench, you have the survival station where you make delicious homemade food, bandages for your wounds, and bow and arrows for a silent approach. Next up, the gun station, self-explanatory. This is where you craft weapons and bullets for your trips. And at last, the gear station. Craft melee weapons, bombs, and passive benefits to your character. There are hidden blueprints that you can find throughout the world. Once found, you can start crafting them. You also have a notebook with you which contains notes such as recipes, images, and letters. There is a map that you can look at in case you're lost. A tourist report that tells you how many days you have survived, bonus passives that are applied to your character, and your resources like materials and ammo. Track recipes which will help you remember what to look out for when going on to your adventures. And finally, your task list to help you understand what you need to do for your missions. The game heavily encourages you to explore the areas you visit with eight different locations to choose from. There is a radio station that you listen to for intel about where weapons, medicine, and supply caches are located. You can look through cabinets, bedrooms, the boys locker room. Hey buddy, I think you got the wrong door. Down. Shelves, classrooms, and many more areas with randomized loot for materials. You can find clues or keys to unlock secret stashes. <coughs> Some areas are blocked behind wooden boards and you need a big melee weapon or gun to break it down. Sorry, small melee weapons won't work. You will run into survivors that are desperately in need of your help. Bandages would really help me out. I could trade them for something you need. People trying to rob you. Or your life. Seems like an easy choice to me. This is the last of Consider yourself lucky. Then robbing them back. Yeah. Factions fighting against each other. If a walker is hiding behind a door, they will break it down. Green walkers that explode the coronavirus on you if they are too close. Some walkers and humans are easy to kill while others might have body armor or helmets. In which case, it will be tougher to take them down. Right, I'm done with you. Careful though. Stay out for too long and the dusk will kick in causing an influx of walkers to appear. There is a mechanic similar to Dark Souls where if you die, you lose all the items you had in your backpack. You can respawn, go back to where you died, and collect your backpack with all the lost items. After death, you only have one shot of receiving your items again. If you die before collecting your backpack, you will permanently lose any items that were inside. After you're done exploring and collecting some goodies, you can return back to your safe zone to salvage any items you want for resources or stash them away for later. Going back to the upgrade mechanic, with enough resources, you are able to upgrade your crafting stations to to create more items and unlock passives. Did I mention that each crafting station has their own passive that benefit your character that you can unlock simply just by upgrading them? My god, so far I've only talked about the crafting and exploration, dude. This is a lot to take in. 
You have the freedom of choice of how you want to approach your enemies or ways to get inside buildings. Doors locked? Find a way to climb inside. How about a side entrance? Use walker innards to disguise yourself as one of them. Silently approach and strike your enemies with a melee weapon. Throw a propane tank and shoot it to demolish your enemies. You can equip a pistol on one hand while having a tactical knife on the other. Ooh. Get off of me! Bah. Bah. Dual wield pistols. Dual wield knives. Dual wield double barrel shotguns. If you are crazy enough. Kill a walker while trying to light up a cigarette with your bullet. Use a bow with an option to choose between regular and explosive arrows. Check this out, ready? Bam! Hey! Craft a robot ticking time bomb, set the timer, and throw it. Now we wait. Throw this explosive piece of can. Yeah, explosives are great, aren't they? Maybe you feel like being an anime character and end up throwing a bunch of things at your enemies. You play what fits your style. Honestly, I would be surprised if anyone can manage to complete the game doing a pacifist run. The possibilities are endless. Be creative. The combat feels responsive and great, almost at the same level as a game like Boneworks. There are small little details with the reloading that makes this game feel immersive. For example, you can open the cylinder on the revolver, point the gun towards the roof, and watch all the bullets ejaculate out. You can use the game physics to close the cylinder once you're done reloading. Thank you, Sir Isaac Newton, for inventing physics. You can open the double barrel shotgun and close the weapon by flicking it up. Use the charging handle on the AR to load a bullet into the chamber. It's these little details that make reloading in VR feel very satisfying. There are 20 plus weapons available to find and craft in the game, such as the FS-92M, Bolt Action Rifle, AR-416, Nova-1014, Hunting Knife, Nail Bat, Fire Axe, and more. Grab a walker's head and jam a melee weapon inside to give them a reality check through the skull. Put a gun on the side of their head and end their misery. If you are in desperate need of a weapon, find a spoon and use it. Be warned, getting bit or receiving damage lowers your health, which you must use bandages to heal yourself. Kill a walker too close with the coronavirus and your max health will be reduced, in which case you need to take pills to recover it. As you consume current stamina, over time your max stamina will decrease. Sprinting, pushing walkers, and landing melee shots consumes your current stamina. You must eat food to restore your max stamina. Weapon durability exists. The more you use it, the more it wears out. Guns with lesser durability have the opportunity to jam after firing. It's very important to keep an eye on the durability of your weapons before going out on your adventures. For the most part, this entire review has been pretty positive about this VR video game. And I do want to list a few more that I should mention before moving on to the negative. This game has a story mode that will take you about six to eight hours to complete. After you complete the story mode, you have the option to continue playing. If you want to be a perfectionist and max out every crafting station, this is for you. The story does a good job at delivering a dark setting. There's weather variety such as rain, dusk, and night. You can configure the HUD in the settings to add an extra layer of immersion and or challenge. The soundtracks are beautiful and if you haven't noticed I've been using a different song from the game for each chapter. There is this nice weight feeling with bigger items and weapons. NPCs react to your actions such as pointing a weapon in front of their face. This last one's a bit of a gray area but sometimes there are some hilarious bugs. Let's move on to the negatives. Keep in mind some of these may get changed or fixed in the future. There are a lack of side missions throughout the story mode. After you complete the story and continue playing, you will start noticing repeating events throughout the world like the same beggars and robbers. Sometimes the HUD would show the Vive wands even though I'm using the index controllers. At times the hitboxes felt awkward on the walkers with helmets. You cannot melee or push walkers back with your weapons. Human AI is acceptable. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this next one is the 
biggest negative and very disappointing. The whole concept of saints and sinners morale choices is non-existent in the game. You can kill literally everybody and not have consequences. You go to sleep, wake up the next day, and everyone forgets. There are maybe about two choices that actually matter throughout the story mode. If you ask me, it's pretty disappointing when the name like Saints and Sinners is in the title, yet there are little to no incentives or consequences of doing favors for anyone. The big question you're probably asking, is this game worth the $40 price tag? 100%! I even went further by purchasing their DLC just to support Skydance Interactive and thank them for making this game right! The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners sets a new bar for the zombie VR genre. At the moment of writing this review, the game is sitting at a whopping 90% positive rating with more than 1,500 reviews in 3 weeks. Go damn! This is very difficult for any VR game to achieve because the number of VR owners are relatively small and the $40 price tag is more than most VR games. I was not expecting to call this as one of my favorite VR games of all time and I'm very happy about it. Hopefully the fans of the Walking Dead series will see this game and be convinced to buy a VR headset because we do need more VR users. Sure there have been some minor bugs here and there, however the developers have been very active in the community and pushing out hotfixes at a rapid pace. Hats off to Skydance Interactive for nailing this title and bringing justice to the Walking Dead video game franchise, something that we've all been waiting for. It would be nice to see new content updates, maybe adding new modes, difficulties, challenges, weapons, even a sandbox mode would be pretty cool. My final rating for this game is a 9 out of 10 with a dude smile of approval. Skydance being one of the first to flagship the zombie VR horror genre. The team over there is setting a great example and I am giving them huge credit for it. One thing I wish this game had is more end game content other than upgrading your crafting stations. Regardless, this title is a must buy even at full price and I hope we will be getting a sequel. Thank you everyone for watching. This video is very different compared to what I normally upload so please let me know about your thoughts down below in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed it. As always, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.